Good morning. We are here at the Rutland Church, and we are bringing you this morning a small devotional that would actually help you going if you're going through a rough time. Uh, throughout this whole this next weeks, we're going to be uh, providing this these devotionals for you to not only watch them but also share them with someone else that might need this kind of uh, uh, devotionals for, for 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 their life. Let us bow our heads and pray before we open the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the blessings you've given us. Even though we're going through hard times right now, we ask you to please deliver us and help us go through them just like you taught us. Help us depend on you. And that whatever we do, whatever, whatever we do throughout our day, that we may always, at the end, be grateful and bless your name for everything. Thank you for everything, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. The verse that I bring you guys today is from the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. It says the following. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor the fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the, from the fold, and there be no hurt in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my, my salvation. The Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer feet, and he will make me walk on high heels. As I read this verse, I remember a pastoral visit I did a couple of years ago with a church member. And he was recounting all the things he went through throughout that week and that month. And he said, Pastor, it's, it's been an extremely difficult time for my family and I. Uh, I lost my job. Not only that, my wife also lost her job. Not only that, my, my child got sick, he, went sent, he, he was sent to the hospital. And after that, well, we ran out of groceries. And not only that, I mean, he just started going and going and going. Her problem ranged from really appliances breaking to, to, to headaches with problems inside the family also, and, and serious medical issues. Uh, it, was, it was just overwhelming for them. And you know what? What he said next is kind of broke my heart. He said, no matter where I turn, I can't see hope. And I think this situation we're all going through right now, it's something similar to what Habakkuk went through. Have you guys ever experienced something like that? It's difficult sometimes to imagine tragedy after tragedy and, and, and us not seeing God deliver us from it. In today's verse, it describes a scenario that no one would like to go through. Habakkuk and the citizens, his friends, were caught in, in a one-after scenario. And I think sometimes we kind of go through the same thing and we feel like one thing, one thing comes after another, we just can't handle it. You see, first, the, the verse says, though the figs, fig tree may not blossom. You see, the fig trees had dried out. The fig trees... Was, some, was something very important to them. They, they enjoy, they, they missed out on, on, on those things they enjoyed daily. I mean, you could go out, cut a tree, uh, a, fig, a, fig, a fruit, and you would eat, you know? It, it, was a, it, was a, it was a joyful thing. After that, they lose the grapes. Now the grapes, that was the daily beverage. They, they, they drank, uh, grape juice. They, 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 I mean, they, it was something they, they would actually enjoy. Not only that, but now they lose the olive. 
The olive was even worse because they didn't have oil to cook. Can you imagine you having all your groceries ready, but you don't have anywhere to cook them? Kind of sounds like today, right? Not only that, the most critical one was the loss of grain, their source of food. Uh, that actually meant starvation for large segments of the population. The final blow for them was the loss of their livestock. You see, not only were they deprived now from the food, now they were deprived from producing food. And given the catastrophe of this magnitude, things didn't look too well. Have you guys ever gone shopping nowadays where you try to find something and, you, and the shelves are empty sometimes? Right? right now, there's this crazy thing about people hoarding the toilet paper and the sanitizers and the napkins. I mean, it, it kind of seems like what Habakkuk was going through in, in, in the nation. However, there's something very beautiful about this verse. It doesn't matter how bad it got. Habakkuk was determined to keep his heart from sinking in despair. How did he do that? He focused on the bigness of God rather than the bigness of the problem. I have this saying that I tell my, my, my church members always, and I want to share it with you today. Don't tell God how big your problem is. Rather, tell your problem how big your God is. You see, it doesn't matter how big the problem is. God is always bigger. And by focusing on the bigness of God, Habakkuk responded by rejoicing in God. Even in the most horrible situations, situations that we, we as, as, as church are not there yet, but he focused on thanking God for the, thing, the little things he had rather than complaining to God of everything he was missing, missing out. And it's not easy to be grateful. Quite honestly, when things go bad, it's not easy at all to be grateful when you're facing circumstances of this magnitude. Even tougher is to be grateful when things go from bad to worse. But it is also important to be grateful even when you don't see hope. You see, as this church member was telling me how bad things got, she said, you know, but you know what, Pastor? Among all this, I'm actually doing all right. Even though all this is going around us and there's struggles and problems in my family, I am grateful that even God has been with us and not left us and we feel his presence. I, uh, quite honestly, I, I, I got teary-eyed. I smiled back, I nodded in agreement. You know, gratitude enabled Habakkuk and the nation to triumph in the worst case scenario. And it's helped, actually it's helped me too in the worst case scenarios. I've gone through some stuff. My family has gone through some stuff. And instead of us just focusing on the bad stuff, we focus on how great God has been through our family. And it's helped us get through. And it can help you also with the challenge situa situation you might be going through right now. Maybe um, you don't see when this will end. It's kind of hard to predict when all this will finish and we'll go back to normal. I don't know when that would happen. But you know what? Among all this, I'm grateful to God because I'm still here. Many people can't say that. Figuratively speaking, when the fig, fig tree doesn't grow, it doesn't bud in your garden. When your olive crop fails, when your fields produce no food, when things go from bad to worse, even then we can triumph in the Lord and rejoice in the God of our salvation. I want to pray with you this morning so that we see the good things instead of the bad things and we be more thankful instead of complaining. I actually want to make a challenge for you this morning. I challenge you to pray thankfully. That means don't ask anything for anything. Don't ask God for anything. Rather, thank Him for everything. Even if it hasn't happened yet, thank Him. Let's pray with gratitude this morning.
I want to ask you to please bow your, bow your heads and pray with me a prayer of gratitude. Dear Jesus, we thank you because even though everything around us is chaos right now, with you we find, we find peace. We also would like to thank you because even though there's sickness, you have so far kept us healthy. And if we have fallen ill, we thank you because we know that you will recover us and deliver us from that, from that sickness. We would also like to thank you, Lord, because of the miracles you will do. Thank you because you will deliver this world from this sickness. Thank you because one day, not far from now, we will be going back to church and, and getting together and doing missionary work and, and telling people about you. Thank you. Because even though we can't see it now, we rely on the hope that your word is true. And you said, Lord, that even if we can't see far beyond tomorrow, or even far beyond today, that you have the best thing prepared for us in the future. So we would like to thank you. Thank you because you will deliver us. Thank you because you will stay with us. Thank you because you will take care of us throughout this ordeal. We thank you all this in your name, Jesus. Amen.